precious one once again i want to say god bless you for the continuation of this message i want to say the lord is with you i honor god for your life and all the things that he's doing in your life now thank you for what the holy spirit is doing in your life since you heard about the message about the presence of god bible says in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore so it means that if you want fullness of joy you make sure that you are always in the presence of God. I pray that the presence of God will continue to empower you. Last week, we learned about how the presence of God affected a lot of lives. Moses, Joseph, and others. David, we also mentioned that they were able to do exploits because of the power and the presence of God in their lives. Now, one of the things we have to understand is that uh, as we mentioned the life of Moses last week, Josephus wrote that Moses was able to experience or he experienced the presence of God right from birth. So he knew what the presence of God was. So he got to a time that the people that God asked Moses, that Moses take them to the promised land, that according to Exodus chapter 33, Bible says at a point the people became very stubborn and rebellious against God. So God said, I cannot take these people again. Moses, you take the people yourself and let, if possible, let me even kill the people. So I raise new generation from you. And at a point, God had to, uh, Moses had to tell God, God, you have to repent. I, I don't know how a man can have such a courage to ask God to change his mind if the person doesn't know what the presence of God is all about. But at a point, you realize that the frustrations and all the things that people have created around Moses also made him to feel a bit lighter. He realized that without the presence of God, he was limited. Why? Because he experienced presence from birth, so he knew what the presence could do. So in Exodus 33, right from verses 13 to 18, it talks about how Moses began to bargain for the presence of God. He said, God, you have asked me to go with these people, but you have not asked me who will go with me. He said, if your presence does not go with me, then I am not going any further. Ah, what a man who knew God and knew about his spirit and knew about his presence so much that he knew that without the presence of God, without the spirit of God with him, there is no way he could accomplish his assignment and be successful. He said, if your presence does not go with me, then I am not going any further. He said, if your presence does not go with us, what will be a distinction? Now, Moses made us to understand that the presence of God brings distinction. Beloved, you need distinction in your life, distinction in your work, distinction in ministry, distinction in whatever you do. Then go for the presence. Because when the presence of God comes upon you, there will be a distinction. Moses said, what will be a separation between your country or your people and other nations? If not your presence, I pray. And then God said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, when the presence of God comes upon a man, the person receives rest. I pray that may the presence of God begin to empower you and give you rest on every side. Now, when you look at the lives of the three Hebrew boys, meaning the Mesha, Sedrach, and Abednego, they were able to endure what they endured. They were able to survive the fire. They were able to stand before the king, all because they carried the presence with them. He said, we know that our God will deliver us. And if our God does not deliver us, we will not still bow. The reason why, beloved, you are succumbing to certain things, you are accepting certain defeats, you are hearing certain voice, and you are obeying them, you are receiving certain reports, whether from the doctor or wherever, and your heart is broken, is because you have left the presence alone. If only you allow, you allow the presence to have it free course in your life, then I want you to know that your life will never be the same. And if you believe it, I want you to shout a big amen to the glory of God. Beloved, as we talk about the presence of God, I want to also mention about the three areas whereby His presence could be experienced or felt. We can experience the presence of God in these three, di three dimensions. As David said in Psalm 139, verses 7 to 10, he talks about the presence of God. He said, where do I run from your presence? Now, when you look at it critically, from this scripture, we can say that the presence of God is everywhere. So, we say that the presence of God is omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He omniscient. He's every, he's sorry, he's omnipresence. 
The Holy Spirit is omnipresence, meaning that the Holy Spirit is everywhere. The presence of God is here. As I talk in Ghana, the presence of God is in Ghana. The presence of God is in Togo. The presence of God is in Liberia. The presence of God is in Germany. The presence of God is in the United States. It's in Canada. It's in it's everywhere because God is everywhere. The Spirit of God carries the presence of God because the Spirit of God is God himself. So I want you to know that the presence of God is everywhere. Again, the second area you can experience the presence of God is what we call the manifest presence. The manifest presence has to do with the type of the presence whereby when people gather, Bible says wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So when people gather in church, the presence of God is in the church. When people gather in a fellowship, the presence of God comes there. When people even gather at home, praying, morning devotion, family devotion, the presence of God still comes there. So that is the manifest presence. This kind of presence takes place whenever people are gathered in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then the third one that I would like to uh, talk about, it has to do with the mobile presence of God. The mobile presence of God. We are still talking about the divine presence of God. But the third aspect that I would like to address today is the mobile presence of God. When I say mobile presence of God, I mean this presence is carryable. You can carry it like the way you carry the mobile phone, but not in your hands, but in your spirit. Not in your hands, but upon your head. Not in your hands, but all around you. Praise the Lord. I've gone to several places whereby I did not wear suits, but I just wore sometimes I'm wearing jeans with Lacoste. And when I entered there, they asked me, are you a man of God? I said, no. I, I said, I asked them why. And they said, when you pass, something pass. When you enter the shop, something enter. This is the kind of presence I'm talking about. Now, for us to understand this mobile presence of God very well, I would like to take us to history. Many years ago in Ghana, about 30, 25 years ago, we used to have a mobile system whereby, a telephone system whereby most of the people were not having telephones in their homes except the rich and the high class in the society. So what happened? When you find your cousin or any of your family relations abroad, the person will call a post office, that's P&T, then that I want to talk to the family and they will send a message to the family and he will give a time a day he will call because sometimes he has to give one week notice for everybody to be guarded a day a, a, a day to be set a time will be set sometimes 12 midnight you see a whole family in a bus going to pnt receiving a phone call from a, a family relations and when the man finished the cousin finished or the brother finished talking to the mother he will talk to the father and after talking to the father to the uncle and they will come down to the list in the family and everybody will be happy so the next day hey Akwesi called from germany uh, adwa called from america that was the kind of the uh, of the mobile system we used to have in the same way it got to in the early part uh, the latter part of the uh, somewhere around 1992 to 98 thereabout they began to bring in more telephone lines to almost every home in ghana so everybody had access to mobile uh, to telephone lines in their homes and communication centers and all internet cafes and all began to boom around so that was another way of communication that people were having then we moved to the third category whereby we began to have mobitel so people were having this mobitel phone lines which used to be analog when people call you, you only see that call is coming, but I don't know who was calling. Then we have space phone, which also came with digital form. So people call and now you can store their names and know who is calling you. And they kept on improving and we now have a lot of uh, communication networks even in our country. That even we have people who have almost all the lines. People are having two phones, three phones, and having about six chips, and I don't know how they are able to manage it. But all that I'm trying to do is to try to make this thing so simple for you to understand the mobile presence of God. So it used to be a time that you had to, I mean, force, work hard to get access to talk to someone abroad. But now, in your room, you are not only having a mobile phone, now we are on Android. And by the help of Android, you can now be in your room, have access to internet. You don't need to go to cafe. You can even print some of your work from your phone. 
or to your uh, your uh, printer. You just issue your command, and you are printing everything you have on your phone straight from there to the printer. Then we also have Tango, we have Twitter, we have all these things around WhatsApp because of Android. And then we are now communicating with each other. So your brother that you should have waited for so many months notice before talking. You cannot just call with even WhatsApp and then you don't need to pay anything. <laughs> Almost zero cost. And then you just call your brother and then you are free now this is how even mobile phone or communication and media has brought us close to communicating with each other now let's come to the mobile presence of god in time past the presence of god used to come occasionally and sit upon maybe elijah use elijah after it has the presence of god has finished the assignment leaves elijah then it comes to elijah then it will come to another prophet. Then it will come to another prophet. So the presence of God was always coming upon the people of God, using them occasionally. And when the assignment was completed, the presence of God will be carried away. Then on the day that Jesus Christ was crucified, oh my goodness, Bible says when he died, when he said it is finished, the temple mats or the mats that divides the holy place and the holy of holies divided into two giving each one of us access to the father meaning that it's like everybody not having a mobile phone you don't need to wait for somebody to always tell you something about god but you can also have a witness of god in your life so we got access to the father on the day that the mat uh, the, uh, the mat or the curtain was divided into two so bible says that behold what what manner of love that the father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God so the presence has now come and is dwelling in us in the person of the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ is in heaven but he dwells in you and I in the person of the Holy Spirit he say when I go I'll pray the father that he sends you another comforter later when we are dealing totally on the Holy Spirit I'll be going into all that but i want you to know that the presence we now have access to the presence of god like that of a mobile phone it wasn't so but now we have access the presence of god the spirit of god lives in us therefore we have the presence of god with us this is where i want us to know that we can now carry the presence of god with us we cannot personalize the presence of god in our lives whereby whenever wherever we pass my god we must experience this presence there David said in Psalm 23 verse 4, he said, Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, I walk through the valley of the... I will fear for why? For thou art with me. What made David so confident in the writing of this psalm was that he saw the presence of God always with him. Now, before Jesus Christ left, he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. And he was making reference as much to that of the Holy Spirit. So the presence of God is with you. And beloved, you don't need to let, allow anybody to deceive you. You can make the presence of God your personal property. If I say your personal property, you can get so much closer to the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit, I want to have more of you. God, I want to have more of your presence. And you don't do anything by your strength you not do anything by your mind you not do anything by your power if only you can rely on the presence of god god will give you rest in many battles god will give you divine directions in many ways god will enable you on every side you begin to experience god in a new dimension maybe you've tried things with your strength for so long the time has come for you to begin to have this presence of god at work in your life now one of the things that we can also make reference from the old testament has to do with second chronicles chapter 20 verses 1 following following it has to do with the king jehoshaphat who feared the lord so much now the enemies the moabites and the amorites also made war against him the bible says when it took place all that my god jehoshaphat did was 
to gather Israel, to gather the children of people of God, the Judah, people of Judah, into the temple to go and pray and seek the face of God. Why? Because in the presence of God, when they seek his face, he will appear, his glory will appear, and he will give direction. Beloved, maybe you've tried so long, you are trying to, you are walking about trying to find all kinds of solutions for your situation. But I want you to know that you've tried, you've done all the things that they've said you must do, and it has not worked begin to follow the presence begin to test and hunger for him as you do this and you begin to follow him closely you begin to see god winning all your battles for you so what happened was that as they were waiting upon god bible says god spoke my god i pray that as you begin to get activated with the presence of god may god speak in your life may god begin to speak in your direction may god begin to give you divine direction bible says god spoke and when god spoke what happened bible says god through the holy spirit spoke through the priest and he said that tomorrow 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 the man of god spoke and said tomorrow just take cymbals take the drum take tambourines go to the battlefield and begin to sing all kinds of songs what a mighty god we serve and the bible said by the time they got to the battlefield they saw dead bodies and all that they did was to carry booties why? Because while they were singing, Bible says God inhabits the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. Whilst they were singing, the, the praises of God, the power of God descended upon them and the glory of God came upon them. And that same hand that came upon them turned to the camp of the enemies and stirred up confusion. What a mighty God we serve. Beloved, I want you to know that you need the presence of God to do everything that you are doing. Ministry, you need the presence of God. Marriage, job, employment, your business, you need this presence of God in your life. Most of the successful businessmen that we see across, across the globe, they are people who know God and they don't play with the presence of God. If only you can only walk with God uh, and begin to have an uh, encounter with his presence, your life will never be the same. Now, beloved, until you meet God, nothing will work for you. You have been trying your best. But until you meet him and his presence begins to work in your life, nothing will work for you. So I want you to have a divine encounter with Almighty, of Almighty, with Almighty God and your life will never be the same. Now let's look at something that Jesus said, which was so wonderful here. My goodness, talking about the presence of God being with a person. Is the presence of God with you? Or you are like Samson? Who said that I'll rise up like the other time. Samson carried so much of the presence of God upon his life. And the Bible says that even the things that God asked him not to do, Samson began to do. He defied his Nazareth vow. Somebody who should have uh, introduced uh, more, more laws and more commandments, he rather introduced suicide bombing. Why? He was the man who, number one, said that who catch, got hold of some number of forces and tie their tails with uh, fire, and they, and they walked through the farms of the Philistines and burnt all the farms. That was the first action, that you can use one or two things to destroy a lot of people. The second thing was, once he stood in the, uh, in the palace and said, remember me this once, and let me die with my enemies. So one person dying with a lot of people. He introduced that. Now, all that I want you to know about this is that Samson had all this presence around him, but he didn't know how to use the presence. You have to know that there is difference between anointing and the presence. There is difference between the anointing and the presence. The, I, I will talk about that one also afterwards. But Samson had this and he also missed it. I pray that you never missed it. You must carry this presence of God upon your life because the anointing will come upon you and use you and go. But the presence must always be with you. Wherever you move, the presence of God must be with you. Now, this is Jesus' own account. If a whole Jesus could make such a statement that it means that precious one, man of God, my sister, my brother, my father, my mother, whoever, wherever you are, it means that you also need this in your life. Look at what Jesus Christ, let's listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 29 about the presence of God. Jesus said, and he that sent me is with me. He that sent me is with me. Man of God, is the man who called you into ministry still with you or he has left you? People of God, 
It's the same man who called you into sonship, into adoption. Is he still with you or he has left you? Businessman is the same man who began the business with you, still with you, or he has left you. Bible says, but Samson didn't know that the Lord has left him. There are times that you are still walking under the shadow and sometimes you don't know whether he's there or still gone. I want you to know that the man must be with you. The presence must be with you. Jesus said that he that sent me is with me. May the Lord Almighty be with you in your life, be with you in your ministry, be with you in your education, be with you in all your endeavors. I pray that may he be with you. It's one thing experiencing him today and another thing leaving you tomorrow. He that sent me is with me. Look at what he said again. The father has not left me alone. It means that he can be with you, but one or two things may happen and he may leave you. He was with Samson, but he left him. He was with King Saul, but he left him. He was with a lot of people in the Bible, but he left them. Is he still with you? This is the message the Lord God Almighty wants me to bring you today. Is he still with you? David saw that the man was leaving him. He said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Precious one, is he still with you? Or oh, his Holy Spirit has been taken away from you. Is he still in that ministry? Or oh, the Holy Spirit has been taken away? The Lord God wants to touch our lives once again. The time has come whereby the true worshippers must worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Jesus said, he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Is he still with you or he has left you alone? The time has come for you to come back on your knees. You used to be on your knees worshiping the Father. You used to be on your knees praying to the Father. You used to be on your knees praying for others. You used to tell yourself that I will not defile myself with a portion of the king's meat. Are you defiling yourself? Is it because of your struggling? You are going, you have decided to give yourself notices and also tell the angels that if you don't change your mind, uh, and this year comes to an end, I'm going to change my mind. Is he still with you or he has left you? Are you doing things by your strength or he's leading you? This was a statement Jesus Christ made that he that sent me is with me and the father has not left me alone. For I, uh, for I do always those things that please him. If he's with you, I, is, are you doing the things that please him? Man of God. Child of God. Businessman. Mr. Mrs. Sister. Brother. Wherever you are. Is he still with you? Are you still doing what is pleasing him? Or you have started doing things to please your own way? Is it because you're going through some kind of rough times so you've decided to leave him behind? God wants you to know that it doesn't matter the situation. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That was David's statement. What is your statement? What is your statement? If it's with you, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Is it still with you? My God, he said, the father has not left me alone because I always do his will. Do you do his will? Do you do his purpose? Do you obey his voice? That's what God wants you to do. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heavens, forgive their sins and heal their lands. God wants to touch your life. The Lord must always be with you. My goodness, the Lord must always be with you. Paul says something in Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 to 18. He says something. My goodness. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, he revealed his son in me. He revealed his son in me. He revealed the Holy Spirit in me. He revealed his presence in me. This was Paul's testimony. He revealed his son in me that I might preach him 
among the hidden. Until you encounter God, you cannot testify about him. People are testifying about all kinds of things. People are testifying about all kinds of things. But until you encounter the almighty God, he said, he revealed his son in me. Until the son is revealed in you, you cannot testify about him. Oh my goodness. He said, immediately, I confess not with flesh and blood. He said, as soon as I had an encounter with him, I did not encounter with flesh and blood. I did not use human errors. I did not use human mind. I did not use my own way. I did not follow what everybody was following. Neither, is it, neither went I up to Jerusalem to which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and, re, and returned again unto Damascus. Verse 18. Then Peter, then after, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. What a wonderful testimony. When you got born again, there were routine of the way people do things. But you see, I did not confer with flesh and blood. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for you to encounter the divine presence of God. You don't need to use human assumptions and human mind and human wisdom to do things. You must allow the Holy Spirit to have his own way in your life. Therefore, I pray for you that may God have mercy on you. That you stop using your wisdom and tricks and human mind to succeed. But allow God, the Holy Spirit, to have his own way in your life. And I believe that your life will never be the same again. May God bless you on every side. May God honor you on every side. And may God enrich you by the power of the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen.